All right, it's 6.30 and we will call the meeting to order. So Rebecca, can we take roll please? Commissioner Charlie? Here. Commissioner Elson? Here. Commissioner Koenig is absent. Commissioner Miles? Alden, you're on mute. Did you not hear us? Alden is definitely here. Alden is definitely here. Um, Commissioner Phipps? Here. Commissioner McPherson? Um, I believe is absent. Uh, Co-Chair Brown? Here. And Co-Chair Janowski? Here. Thank you. Um, let's just try to get Alden one more time to make sure she can share her mic. And Alden, can you hear us? I don't, okay. it does not look like she can. It does not. I just texted, I just texted her. Perfect. Okay, but everyone else is hearing us, no problem, correct? Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, for the first time in two years, we are gonna salute the flag in person and say the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Under God. Indivisible. All right, item number two, open time for public comments. We do not have anyone in the room. So Rebecca, can you see if there's any public comment that came in? My timer over. Um, but we do have um, our two recently appointed uh, commissioners. We have Alexander Blumling, who will be who was appointed to be the youth commissioner beginning July 1st, and Tim Rose, <coughs> who was appointed to be a commissioner effective July 1st. And um, I invited them here tonight to introduce themselves. Um, Tim, would you like to go first? Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for, um, for the invitation. It's very nice to meet all of you guys. Hope to see you. Um, uh, soon in person. Uh, unfortunately, my wife is working late, so I have to zoom in. I've got uh, three little kiddos uh, in the other room, hopefully behaving. Um, but yeah, I'll just try and uh, keep it short and sweet. Um, so uh, my name is Tim Rose. Um, I was uh, born and raised here in Marin. Uh, I actually grew up in uh, in Tiburon, uh, but I've been living with my family for the last 10 years here in Corte Madeira, right by Town Park. Uh, I have a nine-year-old son and two wonderful twin girls that are uh, six years old, all going to Neil Cummins and very actively involved in a lot of the wonderful programs that we have here in Quarter Madeira and Parks and Rec, uh, ranging from art, sports, skateboarding, base, you know, baseball, soccer, uh, everything. So um, my heart's been in it. I've been coaching, um, trying to get as involved as possible. Got a little extra time on my hands right now. So I want to give back any way I can. So I'm here to offer, um, you know, my perspective and see how, you know, any of my experience can, can help um, grow out uh, additional programs. Um, but as far as my background goes, um, you know, I went to here at uh, school at, uh, at Redwood, graduated uh, in 97. Hopefully my kids will go there as well. Go, uh, go, go Giants. Um, so I, I did go to school up in Oregon. Um, I, you know, I studied uh, sociology and computer information technology. Um, I've used both of those uh, in various areas of my career. Um, but uh, starting out uh, in, uh, with an IT background, doing a lot of database uh, work. Uh, moving into um, some nonprofit work. Uh, I helped start up a local nonprofit. Uh, it was probably about uh, 12 or 13 years ago, um, working with uh, mentoring programs, uh, Boys, and, uh, Boys and Girls Club, uh, Big Sister, uh, Big Brother, Big Sister, um, working with um, youth in, in schools to develop uh, personal board of directors to help guide them through um, life and develop uh, a career path. Um, uh, after that, I got uh, back into um, IT, spent a, a great deal of time in enterprise information technology, um, working with government agencies, uh, main, mainly in manufacturing technology, but uh, you know, I've, I've, I spent uh, time working with Department of Defense, Army, Navy, Air Force, um, building out a lot of manufacturing technology on the cybersecurity side. And then uh, most recently, um, I've been working um, also in manufacturing technology, but developing uh, an AI powered uh, training system uh, for a lot of um, blue collar workers, a lot of manufacturing sector folks developing uh, YouTube like content, uh, content for, um, for company training. Um, so that's kind of, you know, uh, I want to keep it short and sweet. I know that, um, you know, next month we'll uh, maybe get into it a little bit more detail, but uh, happy to answer any questions that you guys might have, but I'm looking forward to meeting you guys all personally. 
uh, and um, hopefully I can I can help. Thank you. Welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. And Alexander. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexander. I'm 17. I go to Branson uh, and I'm a junior right now. I've been living in Corona Madera for the last 10 years. And over that time, I've been involved in like many different sport parks and rec stuff. Uh, I played in the soccer league. I was in the baseball league um, and I had a lot of great memories there. And so when I when I found out that there was this opportunity, I figured I'd apply. Uh, and I'm really excited to sort of bring that joy and uh, love for sort of sports and also just community oriented activities. Um, and I'm really excited to just get involved in that uh, starting next month. So I just wanted to say thank you and just briefly introduce myself. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Great. And um, I'll be sure to continue to send you the agenda packets and we look forward to having you back at the next meeting and swearing you in and having you start your new positions on July 1st. Have a good evening. Thank you. Any other public comment? Let me just refresh my email one more time. Um, we did not receive any emailed public comment and I am not seeing any raised hands. Um, but if anyone does want to have a public comment, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. No additional raised hands. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna turn it over to Louise. We're sharing duties today. Okay. That's, what, that's what coaches Great. do, we share. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Okay, if there are no more public comments, then we're going to move on to tonight's presentations. Our first presentation is an update from Recreation Coordinator, Coordinator Perry Nall. She's going to share with us the programming for active older adults. Thanks, Perry. Great. Thanks, Louise. Okay, um, let me share the screen. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So um, my name is Perry. For those of you don't, that don't know me, I'm um, a recreation coordinator for the town of Corte Madera. And most of my focus um, in the last year has been running and creating the senior program slate for um, the community center. So uh, today I just kind of wanted to give a brief overview of what the programs will be like um, through the summer. And they'll probably continue through the fall in addition to a couple new ones um, and just kind of what we've been doing at the community center. Can you guys all hear me all right and everything? Okay, cool. Okay, so this is kind of a weekly schedule for um, what the, um, like what a week if you're a senior in Corte Madera can look like. Uh, I was pretty purposeful about making sure that there's an activity every day of the week so that if you want to get out and about each day, you can. Um, we also tried to have a range of um, active programs and um, kind of like quieter social programs so um, you, people can pick and choose what they're up for that day. And I'll give a little overview of kind of each category of program. Uh, so first, here's a bit of marketing that we did for the programs. Um, we've done a little bit of social media, but obviously our target audience is not on Instagram and Facebook too frequently. So a lot of it has been paper flyers, um, especially these are the pages in the guide that went to every house. And it's been super neat to see people um, like bring in the guide with dog-eared pages and circled programs and said, oh, you know, I read about this one. And can you tell me more about this one? And so uh, it's been cool to see how the marketing has worked um, in addition to just like the reader board and a couple other things around town. Um, so these are our health and wellness programs. Um, we have just started a senior fitness class on Mondays. Um, and then the chair yoga and the seniors in balance have been going on for a while. And those are programs that we restarted that had been going before COVID um, with Stacy and Shirley as the instructors. Um, those are both super popular programs. People love them and they're really excited that they're back. Um, and then the walks also our new program, um, Mayor Casisa came on it last week, which was super fun, shared like a little bit of history about the town with the people that were attending um, and just kind of got, got to get to know the, the park a little bit. We haven't gone too far yet, just kind of based on the ability of the people that come, but it's been fun to just like get outside and, and get to see the community a bit more. These are some of the other events and activities we have. Uh, we had the first big band dance last in a couple of weeks ago, last month. Um, and the next one will be on June 8th. So if you're interested, it was super fun. It was really nice to be able to like throw kind of a bigger event in the building. Lots of people came and they shared that it was fun to be able to dress up and attend something. Um, and then the lunch program has been going on for a while. And the bridge program is kind of just like a casual game that 
people come in and play. Um, we're hoping to have a beginning bridge class soon. We just got some recommendations for a couple of teachers that I'm going to reach out to. But right now it's just kind of come in and play at your speed, at your level. Um, and people really like that. That's Thursdays. And then these are a couple of the educational sessions that we've been offering. Um, so the AARP driver safety class, we had the first one last Friday. It's a two-part um, session. So the second one will be this week. And then there'll be a driver refresher course for people that already took this long course and just need to refresh it um, on June 15th. If you know anyone interested, send them my way. And then this Detect and Connect class, we had that a while ago. Um, it's a really cool program run by the Aging of uh, the aging of action initiative so um we haven't had a ton of interest in it so it's kind of if people are interested they can sign up and then we'll book we'll book a date for that one again yeah so send your seniors to me i've been i've had a really fun part uh this has been a really fun part of my job is getting to know this part of the community um so if you know if your parents or grandparents moved to Corte Vendera, i would love to meet them uh and now we're gonna oops oops how do i go Back. Oh my gosh, I'm so, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to shift gears a tiny bit um, to a little front desk report of just kind of the visitors that have come to the front desk since we opened it last fall. Um, and this is a summary since January, January to April. Um, just kind of like with how people come to the desk, how many people come. So yeah, these are a couple of summaries of the people that have been coming. As you can see, most people come for a key to the tennis court. Some people purchase in person. A lot of people purchase online to pick it up. Some people come to use the bathroom or are wondering about an event we're having. Um, some people are part of a group that's meeting there or, um, you know, they're picking up the Alliance numbers, picking up something from the closet. A lot of people come in wondering about senior programs. So that's kind of like seeing this data helped me figure out that that's why people are coming in, you know, make a flyer that you can give people when they come in. People are still kind of interested in the books. So we keep the bookshelf up, um, lost and found, different things like that. Most people come Monday through Thursday, but we do have a couple of visitors on Fridays. Um, so this just kind of gives a summary of that. And then lastly, this is just the times of the day that people mostly come. This kind of gives us an idea moving forward about um, if we should open the desk longer um, or what times, um, you know, we could close for a lunch break and different things. So most people um, come pretty frequently throughout the day. Um, this gives us a nice idea if it's important to stay open past four or open before nine. But the hours seem to be pretty um able for people to attend uh, when they need things. And the phones are available at the same times. And I think that's been an easy way for people to reach us too. So yeah, visit us at the front desk. We're open Monday through Friday, nine to four. And that's all. You guys have any questions? Thanks so much, Perry. I just, uh, before we open it up for questions, I, I know you were such an important part of keeping seniors engaged throughout the, the real peaks of the pandemic. So you've been a bright light for us and as part of the recreation staff, we can't thank you enough for that. Um, before we open it up for public comment, are there any questions from commissioners? Gary, just super curious of the, of the seniors that are coming, is it a one core group? Or are you getting kind of new folks every time? What does that kind of the mix and volume of folks look like? I would say there's a lot of new people. I thought that it would be, um, I thought that it would mostly be the people that were on the call list. And it's probably the people that come to the program is probably 50% people from the call list that I knew um, from when I started, but it's a lot of new people. There just was a family uh, couple that moved in right next to the park and their daughter is helping them move into Corte Madera. And she was so excited to like come in and say, oh, my parents are moving here. You know, I want to sign them up for things. And I said, oh, you came to the right place. Like, let me give you this flyer. So there's definitely like lots of new faces also. Awesome. And it seems like people kind of choose one program that they like to attend every week, um, as opposed to like do quite a few different ones. So the different programs are then serving different different groups yeah. of folks who are showing up. Cool. Yeah. Gotten any requests for programming that we haven't yet offered that people seem to be interested in? Um, yeah, I think we've been able to respond to quite a few of them, um, but beginning bridge is one that I'm working on right now because people have seen the intermediate bridges available, but then they want to learn. So that's one I hope we can offer. And also bingo, we're hoping to have bingo back soon in the building. Um, and that's something that I would like to start soon. So we're trying to figure out the logistics on that. I have to say your energy is just infectious. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Light of infections right now are all. <laughs> Bad word. It's, yeah, it's your, it's great. Great to hear. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you guys. Any other questions from commission before we open it up? 
Okay, do we have any um, public comments? I don't see any hands raised. I'm just refreshing my email while I'm waiting to see if we get any raised hands. And I did not receive any emailed public comments and I am not currently seeing any raised hands from the attendees. Okay, we can bring it back to the commission for any final thoughts. I would just echo what's already been said and thank you again, Perry. It's just a, just a example of the kind of staff that we want working for Corte Madera, representing all the great programs for the community center and parks and rec. And it, your energy is infectious. You bring a lot of joy to your job and I know that people feel that. So thank you for that. Thank you guys. Okay, if there aren't any other comments or questions, we'll go to the second item on our agenda tonight. Pull up, uh, which is an introduction from Parks and Rec Director Ashley Howe on the summer activity guide, which looks great, by the way. Oh, good. I'm, well, I'm so glad that everybody received it in the mail. So about two weeks ago, everyone should have received this in the mail. It uh, was delayed because along with the supply chain issues that also impacted um, the paper that we use on all the, print, the printed activity guides. And since none of our local agencies or agencies around had been printing them since COVID and everyone wanted to start this issue, everyone was waiting. So it was a little bit more delayed, um, but it does cover everything that was going from, August, from May through August and some, some of it into September. So this is kind of what we like to refer to for everything that is um, our, um, let's see our programs and our classes for all, all ages, our summer camps, our community events, and then information. So we've got a, you know, a number of pages that are dedicated to a lot of the senior programs and services that we have in there. And then moving forward, we can continue to add and highlight different things that we want to promote during the program, during the, the year. The plan is to have um, three issues a year, and then also in addition have um, designated after school program that goes out to the schools um, in backpacks once the kids start, so each semester. So um, to give a brief overview, we've got our programs, classes, um, and activities for all ages, our summer camps, and then our community events. And the events can cover from um, Parks and Recreation Department produced, community, um, the Chamber of Commerce, the Community Foundation, and then other collaborations like the, um, uh, the Ray Simpson Band for the Big Band Dances. Right now, there are about 35 camps and classes. Um, camps with the best enrollment to date are kin Kinder Readiness, which is getting the kindergartners ready to go into their classrooms at Neil Cummins and the Cove, Art Camp, Mini Music, Pickleball, Skateboarding, Basketball, Carpentry, Junior Sports, a Tennis, Amazing Science, and Play While STEM Legos. Um, and there still is room for uh, participation in other camps. I know that a lot of families are kind of waiting for what their friends are doing, but if you still need to look for coverage or have some holes in your schedule this summer, uh, check us out. We have a lot of different varieties of programming. And one way in the activity guide is to check out this summer camp planner. Um, so we've got an extensive thing based on whether it's uh, produced by our Corn of Madeira um, recreation staff, full day camps, um, half day camps. Um, we can cover your schedule, whatever you need. So check us out. And if you need any help kind of walking through it, you're welcome to call our front desk and we can walk you through it as well. And then moving into community events, um, we have an event calendar in our activity guide. And this is just kind of a using it as a placeholder because eventually it's gonna be on this double page. Eventually we will like to have an extensive community calendar that's kind of seasonally that we can collaborate with other producers in the, in the community. Right now it, it does include um, the big band dances, some of the family dances that we're planning in-house, um, our movie nights, the lion share event, um, the 4th of July that's produced in, in com in, with the Chamber of Commerce as well as the Park and Recreation in the town. Um, the summer concert series is also listed on here that's produced by the Community Foundation on Sundays at Minky Park. Um, and we really want groups in our community to know that we have this master calendar and really start to work together to, pre to produce a, um, an all-inclusive calendar for everyone to kind of refer to. So if you know anybody that's producing events in town or wants to or wants to collaborate with us, let them know we're here. Um, okay, so some of the ones we wanted to highlight, we've got um, the event calendar, we've got the family dances, we kicked off um, family dances in the park with um, DJC on Friday the 13th, and it was a lot of fun, we probably had close to 200 people show up, we even had um, DJ Carlos, who is DJC, um, come out and they, he led a line dance, um, so it was super cute, and we got all the kids to do it, and 
it was really great to see all the families get together and everyone came up to us and said how great it was to actually see people in person. And we also had a plein air art event at the same time. We're really trying to plan these activities and these events in the park that have multiple facets so we can bring a bunch of different people together. And it's not just coming out for a dance or not just coming out for a barbecue or something like that, but there's art, there's events, there's interactive activities. Um, we also had large lawn games for kids and families to play together, cornhole and Jenga and um, smash ball and um, connect Four, like just different things that we can kind of engage people different ways. Um, but the plein air event um, was basically the artists would come out and they'd paint uh, during the day and then whatever they'd finished, they displayed it. So we only had four for the first time, but I know that it can grow. Um, but we had uh, watercolor, we had oil and I think we had one acrylic and it was really cool. And then we brought them all out and we showed everybody with the DJ. And so it was a nice way to honor that and promote our uh, Monday watercolor class for adults. Um, we've got the 4th of July parade and celebration with the chamber in the town. Um, and I know that we haven't had that for a couple of years. So we're really looking, looking forward to having everybody out for that. Again, it's going to be the parade. Um, more information is listed on page eight in our activity guide. Um, but the, the parade ends in um, Corner Madeira Town Park, and that's where all the festivities will be, uh, live music and tents and informational booths and a chance to network with our staff and get your face painted and get a little crafting on. Um, Parks Make Life Better Month is typically July, and we'll have a July activity calendar. And for that, that is on the inside back cover. We've got something fun to do every day of July, and it's a way to kind of connect and reconnect with um, parks and how important they are to not only um, the safety of our communities, but the networking and getting outside, our health and wellness. Um, and it's a lot of fun to create with the different activities for that. And then family movie nights in the park. Um, we are bringing our movies out to the park. We are going to be having it at Town Park as well as Cove Park. So please don't miss that. It's in June and July. Um, and again, we're not just going to have the movies. We're planning on having an opportunity for community groups to come out and do booths, have the PTOs, be able to sell and network, um, do fundraisers, um, get a food element to it, and then do some kind of giveaway or um, a low budget purchase item, like a, some glow in the dark stuff. Um, big band dances, that's monthly except for August. Perry touched on that a little bit. That's a collaboration with Ray Simpson Band, and that's inside the community center. And then summer concert series at Menke Park, and that's um, June through August. And that is with our um, community foundation. So here's a little sample. We've got our calendar. We've got the 4th of July page. And then save the date. Um, for the family dances. So that's part of the um, kind of reintroducing the family dances that were so popular. And by family, I mean, it used to be traditionally the uh, mother, son and the daddy, daughter, but we're trying to make sure that we're doing the most inclusive word wordology that we can use. Um, so we're still kind of tweaking what we can do. We would like to have it focused on, you know, um, daughters bringing their dads out, but we don't want to discourage anybody from bringing anybody that's important, whether it be, uh, you know, a son and an aunt, or a, we really want everyone to come, but we're going to do a Western theme through the whole thing, and we're going to do two back to back. So we'll have two in June, Father's Day weekend, and then two in July. And then hopefully we'll, we'll end it with a uh, family roundup in August or September and do some extra family activities for that one. There's our July makes parks like park makes life better month and then our family movie nights. Big band dances and our summer concert series up at Minky Park with the foundation. And then a little preview for fall programming. Um, Erin right now is one of our recreation coordinators that's um, programming all the after school classes. She's working on 45 plus fall activities. Um, those are dance classes throughout Elite, um, Elite Academy, LA, tap and hip hop, cheerleading, Pokemon card game classes, ceramics, art and drama, uh, jumping jacks, which would be a new morning playtime in the main hall, and then rising stars martial arts and a new ladies shred skateboarding. <laughs> We're unfortunately going to be losing our skateboarding teacher, but we have a new one that uh, has her own business and it's Lady Shred. So we're constantly coming up with new things. If you ever have an idea that you'd really like to have a program offered and you have a suggestion, you can always let us know. Any questions? Thanks so much, Ashley. Um, such a diversity of programming. I love to see all the new things that we're doing and the energy that is coming with that. I, I think that the excitement of the community is coming back <laughs> the energy of the community and the desire to get back and out and do new things is going to be a really helpful momentum for this program um i i would like to commend the group um i know this is time for questions but 
I think that there's been a real collaboration that I haven't seen before across the community and bringing all of the events into one place and making this a really central part of how people find out what's going on in the town is a terrific advancement. So good, good for you on doing that. Yeah, I also just wanted to say, I actually loved getting the physical brochure in the mail. I mean, it kind of just reminded me of all the days of when my kids were young and I was going through it. And Perry, I want you to know my dad's 84 and he lives part-time in Corte Madera. And he's like, kind of was saying he was bored. And I'm like, dad, you could do some of these things. Like, this is so cool. And he's like, oh, this looks good. And he like took my copy with him. So it was actually super cute. So I, yeah, it was just fun. And like the summer calendar, I think it's just so helpful, even though we have all the information in other places, there's something about just like having it on a piece of paper that it's just, it's just, anyway, I think it'll be helpful. I agree. Are there any other questions from the commission? Okay, we can open it up for public comment. Are there any comments from the public? I don't see any hands raised. I'll give everyone a moment to raise hands and um, refresh email while we're waiting. We did not receive any emailed public comment and I am not seeing any raised hands. From the okay, well, we'll bring it back to the commission for any other comments. I just have a question. Are there ever any interest for cooking classes? We have that kitchen in the community center have we ever thought about doing that or anyone express an interest in having something like that? Um, so far, I haven't heard any interest in Corte Madeira and previous agencies we've run um, cooking camps. So for mostly youth based, um, but we're, we're happy to do um, either youth or adults. Um, it just comes with a couple of people that are interested and it's definitely have an instructor that, that they can refer to. But yeah, we're happy to do it. I know you've had that, um, that cocktail drink mixing class um, yeah, uh, I didn't do that, but it sounds like a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It's, um, it's, it's via zoom so that it adds a layer of safety, but I did participate one of them. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Ashley, I was curious about, um, with all these programmings, I know that we have various different kinds of, um, relationships and relationships formats. I, I was hoping you might be able to help understand, like, for this example with the cooking classes, like if a group came with the instructor, um, how does the economics of those kinds of programs work? Um, is, uh, is there a percentage um, that Parks and Rec is taking from it? Um, does it depend on whether we are setting up the service provider? Um, do they get a discount on the spaces? I'm just kind of curious as to how, how the economics of it work. So we can offer classes two ways. We can do it as a contract and that is generally starts at a 60, 40 split. And that's like kind of an industry uh, setup. Um, it's not a set. We can, uh, we can flex it based on if we have a great instructor that has a service they want to keep really um, inexpensive and cost efficient. We are able to, to, to flex that and on a scale. Um, otherwise, um, some agencies uh, do not allow um, organizations to come in and just rent and then teach, but we do. Uh, so people can come and rent our space and then teach their own class. It's whatever is the most cost effective or effective for them and what they want from it. Okay. So some of the program, so it's, it, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference by what's in the thing, but if someone's renting and teaching, they would be in the brochure in the same way that if there was a 60, 40 split. It would not be listed in the brochure if they were just renting unless they did an advertisement. So this issue, we just wanted to get it out, but going forward, we do have a fee schedule for advertisements, and then we would want to put them in a designated area so that you can tell the difference between a contract and a renter. Okay. And then the, the folks that have the 60-40 split, then that, that has some degree of um, oversight from Parks and Rec in terms of the number, like we wouldn't have 25 tennis people and zero something else that it's you're you're kind of there's part of that relationship is building out and finding the right instructors and, and and folks that work for the community as well it does help with that as far as the contracting agreement there's a lot of steps that you need to include in it as far as um, liability and legalities of it <coughs> excuse me um, so we do a contract and you know some of the elements within the contract is that they have to have liability insurance they have to have a business license um, there, we, we, you know, they're a little bit more vetted as far as, you know, what their quality is going to be to produce before we, um, 
before we collaborate. Got it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, thanks so much, Ashley. So with that, we will then move on to the consent calendar. And the purpose of the consent calendar is to group items together, which are routine or have been discussed previously and do not require further discussion. They'll be approved in a single motion, but any member of the commission, town staff, or the public may request removal of an item for discussion. Tonight on the consent calendar, we just have the minutes to review and approve from our March 28th, 2022 commission meeting. Are there any comments, questions, or requests to remove this? No, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Great, Rebecca, can you do a vote please? Commissioner Charlie? Yes. Commissioner Elson? Yes. Commissioner Koenig? Commissioner Miles? Epstein? It's absent. Commissioner Phipps? I was absent. Um, don't necessarily have to abstain if you were absent. Um, oh, okay. We can, all, we, we, we can push it forward right. to the next agenda. We just, we would need, um, <coughs> I don't think we, we would have a quorum to approve the minutes if there are two abstentions, but we can put it on the next agenda if you'd like. If there's, if there's no problem that I wasn't there, then I can approve minutes. I did read them. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, I, I reviewed them, but I wasn't there. So I, I can't really um, make a judgment um, if you want feedback regarding uh, how accurate they are. You didn't watch the whole YouTube? <laughs> okay. No, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> One more for a quorum. Um, actually, I need, yes, I need five. So um, if one abstention changes to a yes, then, the then I can um, I'll go through the line again. Commissioner Miles, were you abstaining? Yes, I'll, Commissioner I'll say yes. Okay. Uh, and Commissioner Phipps, you abstain? I, I read them. Uh, I said yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, and Commissioner McPherson is absent. Um, Co-Chair Janowski? Yes. And Co-Chair Brown? Yes. Thank you. Great, thank you. So we have no business items uh, to go through tonight, which takes us then to staff updates and commission reports. And we'll start with the director report. Thank you. Um, a lot of mine was already covered in our presentation. So we covered active adult programming and activities. Um, Corte, de, Corte Madera Children's Center, we are almost wrapping up our first full season um, for school. And so next month we'll have a presentation summarizing um, their program, their successes, what they've learned, what things might be different next time, uh, next school year, and then some information about when to expect um, information for next school year. Um, and then also the budgetary things. Um, after school enrichment classes, we covered that in the presentation. Uh, we've got uh, 45 planning for fall, and we've got the ones that are underway right now for youth, as well as, again, the um, adults covered by Perry. <clears throat> um, adults with di uh, dis disabilities, which is Rec Inc., um, developmental disabilities. Um, Aaron also supervises those programs. They've been doing in-person basketball. Um, they needed to cancel their prom, unfortunately, because they're concerned with, again, the rise of COVID and infection. Um, she's trying to determine right now whether she's going to be canceling the uh, movie night that they rented at the movie theater. Um, they're used, this is a group that's, you know, been consistently meeting via Zoom for the last two years, um, but it's so nice to be able to have them come in person and see each other. Um, so Erin's really working with that and working with all the groups that come and they, they bring clients with them. So again, I'm trying to work on that one. Um, staff recruitment updates for facility attendant. Our full-time facility attendant position has been filled. The uh, Francisco should be starting with us um, on the 31st, so Tuesday. So we're really excited to have someone there. He's gonna be able to bridge that difference and be a consistent uh, presence for evening classes, afternoon, helping us set up and break down and transition the room, as well as walking out to the park on Saturday. So work a Tuesday through Saturday schedule. So it can be that presence, presence in the park, making sure that people can check in at the picnic areas. We've got the right people sat at each location. 
we don't have unapproved tents or jump houses, things like that. And hopefully it'll make it a little bit smoother uh, for people wanting to utilize our park on a first come first serve basis, as well as reserve in advance and also help um, our code enforcement. Um, recreation assistant, I think we've got enough people right now for our front desk, but we're still um, interviewing and we're gonna start the background process um, and do a couple of offerings. We wanna make sure that we have some consistent presence at the front desk, but also alleviate some of our staff that have been working on other projects. And like Perry, who's been covering a lot of the front desk responsibilities right now, bring them back in the office so they have some quiet time to be able to see projects through. Um, and then also have a couple of people that are just, you know, maybe here for the summer and can work on smaller projects, but can also fill some of those voids at the front desk, making sure that our, our lobby is open for clients, for registration, information, and for restroom access. Um, and then recreation aid position, which is mostly for our after school programs and our summer camps. Um, I, we are, I think we've almost got enough candidates to support summer, summer programming right now, but if you have anybody that's out there looking for a great first time job or somebody that's worked with kids or likes babysitting, send them our way. Um, Tim has taken the lead on the summer camp program, so he has extensive experience, 20 years in the industry, so it'll be a lot of fun, um, but it will be safe. So um, if you wanna send your kids or your staff, future staff members. Um, Summer events we covered, but we also have a link um, to uh, our program where all of them are listed and also a link to the activity guide and also a preview link to the July is Parks Make Life Better month, which we will um, be presenting to council for official proc proclamation. If you have a community group that really identifies with Parks Make Life Better and um, being a full force in July that would like to make that presentation, uh, please let me know. Um, generally, we like to have a group in the community make that presentation. Last year, it was the, the group with um, the adults with developmental disabilities. So it's nice to hear from somebody that's actually impacted and use, using our parks. And that's it. Any questions? Quick question about the summer camp. Mm -hmm. Do we still have a counselor and training program? We do. Okay, good. Yep. CIT program is, is, is there. Great. Ashley, one of your comments um, brought to mind question or something that we've covered on previous agendas that we haven't talked about in a while. And I'm just wondering what the dogs on leash or off leash issues have been, or if those have been pretty much um, eliminated at this point. And then also related to that, have we had people setting up jumpies or uh, using, using the spaces that should be rented out for picnics without proper permits? Uh, yes, I have heard a little less about dogs off leash, um, whether it just be a couple of people that are, are often approached by code enforcement and that's being kind of taken out of our purview. Um, we have had a couple people that needed to be uh, talked to and educated on utilizing our tennis courts for different lessons that were not approved. Um, we also had, to, we have um, a number of um, unapproved tents, large tents mm -hmm. set up in the in town park specifically. Um, over by the picnic area or over by the playground is um, a non-reservable area because it's nice to be able to have people be able to picnic outside of the playground and not have large parties and jump houses set up where a ton of kids are going to be that are not invited to the party and therefore can't access those fun elements. Um, so when we when you see anything set up in that area, it's it's not generally permitted. Um, at least this year, we also are getting um, a number of requests for. Um, events or parties or groups want to use the uh, picnic areas that breach the capacity that the picnic area is designed for. If you think of eight to 10 people are technically fit around a picnic table. And so we try to create the capacities of those size sizes around that. Um, so we're also trying to consider if we're constantly getting these larger groups wanting to use our facilities, maybe we should actually designate a larger area and bring in some more tables. So that's something that we're also looking at. So if we had a certain number of a certain areas that are asked for larger capacities, maybe we consider converting those um, going forward into larger areas. So, yes, we are unfortunately getting some areas that we need to reach out to our community members and often not community members to to educate them on what our policies are. It seems like having a space where a larger group can congregate makes a lot of sense because the park is used for, you know, we used to use it when my kids were little for end of year picnics, for, for instance, so a full soccer team plus two parents or at least one parent for each kid, and that's definitely over capacity. Yeah, exactly. And right now we don't we don't allow any outside equipment, so no extra tables, chairs, mm -hmm. easy ups, anything like that that comes out. And so if you've been in the park and you've seen these large groups, you know that that's, that happens a lot, unfortunately. Right. 
And music, music yes. and speaker No system. amplified sound without a special event permit. Yeah. We're working on it. Everyone's excited to be out. And so now that we have somebody that's, you know, going to be a full-time employee, he's going to be able to go out there and really be kind of our spokesperson and hopefully help educate people in the best possible way. Yeah, that's great. And the park is still looking really good despite the drought and the water issues. It's still very welcoming. Yeah. Okay, why don't we move on to commissioner reports. Um, commissioner McPherson isn't here, so we won't have an update on the April town council meetings. And the executive advisory committee did not meet in the past month. So we'll move on to subcommittee reports and we'll start with programming. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pro programming committee did not meet in the two months since our last meeting. Um, and neither did community engagement. <laughs> okay, how about an update from the master plan subcommittee? Well, then a gold star for the master plan subcommittee. No. Um, all right, so based on the results of the community survey and the focus groups with community organizations and special interest groups, and open meetings with the community at large. We identified the following as top areas of community interest and need. And I'll go over those in a second, but um, sort of orient us of, as to where we're going. So those, um, those items are gonna be incorporated into an executive summary with substantiating data and relevant context for discussion and public comment and consideration of a vote at our June Parks and Recreation Commission. And then that'll be followed by it being taken to the town council in July for further discussion and public comment and commission uh, direction. Then with the direction from town council, the agreed upon priorities are gonna be taken through what's called a feasibility analysis. And that's gonna include budget and timing and location and environmental implications and things like that. So I've got the, the list I referenced. Um, first up, public bathrooms at our parks, including immediate opportunities to upgrade and enhance facilities at town park and evaluating needs and opportunities at other town owned parks. Uh, enhancement outdoor community spaces, that's including pathways and steps and trails, redevelopment of Memorial Bench Program, development of trail maps, local history walks, things of that nature. Next is a community pool, evaluating opportunities for either a dedicated facility or shared use agreements. Classroom space, which includes opportunities for enhancement and modification of the community center and evaluating the near and long-term use of Park Madera Center. Space for outdoor community events, that's gonna of course include food trucks, cultural events, concerts, performances, including Menke Park improvements currently being developed through the Corte Madera Community Foundation. Enhanced space for outdoor fitness and sports activities, including bocce ball and pickleball, et cetera. Field improvements at town and cove parks, considering both artificial and natural turf solutions and working in partnership with the LCM SD to identify optimal solution for shared field locations. And last but not least, enhanced space for in uh, indoor events. And that's our list. That's, thanks for laying out that process and the timeline. That's helpful. Thanks. Are there any commission um, commissioner comments or questions on any of these updates, or any commissioner individual commissioner updates? Um, oh, go ahead. Just being in the park a lot with kids for soccer, lacrosse, things like that. I talk to a lot of parents who spend a lot of time there while they're their kids are at practice or games. And I keep hearing how great it would be to have a, some sort of snack, um, snack shack, or, you know, um, I was just at Joe Wagner field and that little snack shack gets a ton of business. Um, and they were saying, you know, it, it would seem like a natural to have some, something there on the weekends, you know, just because parents often find themselves there for a long time to be able to go and grab something for themselves or their kids. I believe we have a building that at one point was a snack shack and is now, I'm not sure what it's used for, but it, it hasn't been used for anything um, public since, since I've been on the commission. But I just wanted to, to let you know the feedback that I've been hearing um, 
people love Cafe Verde, but on the weekends, it doesn't open until later. And so there's a lot of parents looking for coffee and to have a coffee cart right there would be, uh, I think like a, a no brainer. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yeah, I agree. Coffee and breakfast tacos. Coffee and breakfast tacos be perfect. And I keep hearing like, you know, grab and go sandwiches and, you know, breakfast burritos. I heard that one definitely a couple of times. Yeah. And um, I know my kids, when they were in um, middle school, going into high school, they worked the snack shack at Joe Wag. And I think that might be a perfect thing for our young teens to do is to work a snack shack in town park. If, if we ever have something like that, be give it. Give our team something. The baseball leagues do it though as part of a bigger volunteer organization. So it's through the baseball leagues that they get the snack shack up and going. Um, so I don't know if there is an opportunity with some of the sports facilities, the sports groups that use um, the park um, in, in the same way that the baseball does that kind of full area around Joe Wag. That um, if there's some kind of scholarship program for kids that participate in the snack shack or something along those lines, but. Um, it does create a great sense of community, Sarah's point. So I think it's an awesome idea. I think it's a great idea. There, I, I know there are probably community members who, you know, paying to be on Corte Madera FC or another sport is a reach for them. And to be able to have some volunteer hours to man like a snack shack or something is a part of a scholarship or something or volunteers would be really helpful. Another good idea. Do we know if there's any impediments to that type of providing food there, like any special permits or location or anything else that we're going to come up against before we get too excited? Yeah, it depends on whether it's going to be prepared, prepared food or prepared on site because you'll need to get um, information through the health, health department. Yep. You'll have to have training um, as well as site inspections and then food storage and there's different things. Mm-hmm. And disposal. I mean, it's going to create additional yeah. waste yeah. and sort of things like that. Yeah. But it'd be great if anybody has suggestions for like a vendor that wants to do it. A local vendor. Oh, yeah. Actually, I'll email well, you. This is part of our food truck um, yeah. exploration, right? Is to have food I'll trucks in the morning there that would be coming yeah. in and start and outsource it. Yeah. Yep. They would only need a business license. Yeah. And, uh, and their own certificate from the from the county. Any mm-hmm. committee want to take this this is back finding on <laughs> community engagement? Mm-hmm. We'll do some brainstorming. Um, I had one other just update. I can't remember if I reported last time, but I um, went to the Seals basketball at Hall with Aaron, and it was just <laughs> such a great event. Um, it, I was really impressed with the way Aaron runs it. Very, very cool. Just great enthusiasm. And they get different kids groups uh, or parents to come and play against the seals. And it was just really cool. Okay. If there's nothing else, um, we will move on to routine and other matters, which uh, we'll start with a discussion of potential future agenda items. Um, we have on here already on the agenda discussion about the Memorial Bench Program with a date TBD, and we just heard from the Master Plan Subcommittee um, a possible June date to read out priorities prior to going to Council. Are there any other items that this group would like to see on a future agenda? I know drought has been an ongoing topic, but I'd love to hear, um, you know, if if you guys have had any plans for like care of trees in the park with ongoing drought. We'll have public works here next week to give us an update or next month to give us an update. Great. Is there any organization or any connection we need to be making with the bike and pedestrian folks around our work with trails and pathways um, as a potential item to have them to coordinate kind of what they're thinking and working on? My thought is if we um, 
included in the executive summary that we want to address parts of that, then we can take that to them like we would um, do community engagement on some of the other topics. Okay. That'd be great, a great note to include them on that. Kind of our first, our first reach out as far as going, building out on that concept. Okay, we would also discuss uh, in May as part of our yearly review commission capital improvement wish lists um, to be included in the master plan recommendations. So we just heard the prioritization based on our community engagement and discussion with special interest groups. Um, Ashley, is there a, a context or format with, within which we should be thinking about capital improvements or is this more just a, a discussion based just like the suggestion for the snack shack, just coming with other ideas that we would want to see incorporated. I think the additional ideas like um, Commissioner Elson had suggested with the snack shack, I think that's a good way so that we've already included a lot of the, um, the previous wish list and those capital improvement plans are, are gonna be tied into the master plan. Okay, great. And then the other items that are on the tentative agenda for a June meeting uh, are the presentation on the plan for Parks Make Life Better Month and the Corte Madera Children's Center, as Ashley already mentioned, those two would be on our agenda as well. So pretty robust set of items to discuss next month. So unless we have any further questions, comments, or discussion, or comments from the public, which we'll check right now. I don't see any hands raised, but Rebecca, if you could just double check if there aren't any other email comments. Um, I'm refreshing my email and we did not receive any emailed public comments and I am not currently seeing any raised hands from attendees. Okay, great. So just a reminder, Commissioner Elson, you're on deck for the town council meetings in June. And if there's nothing else to discuss at this meeting, we will consider this session closed. Thanks so much for attending and participating and we'll see you in June. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thanks.